Hi, my name is Chris, and welcome to the last of our prerequisite videos. Um, this one is about getting started with QGIS. So I'll be walking you through how to install QGIS at a high level, um, and uh, a review of our training data for this uh, series of videos, and, and also a run through of the folder structure we'll be using uh, throughout the exercises. So let's get going. If you haven't already installed it, you can install your QGIS software by opening the QGIS website in a browser. This is at www.qgis.org, or organization. Click on the Download Now button and download the latest version of QGIS. QGIS allows you to download installers for Windows, Mac, OS, Linux, BSD, and Android. Download the installer for your computer. For Windows, Ensure you select the correct bit size. If you're not sure which bit size your laptop is, go to Start, then Control Panel, then System, and find whether your computer is 32 or 64 bit. Then go back and use the installer that's appropriate for your computer. Please note that this training has been created based on Windows QGIS version 2.18, Las Palmas, using the operating system Microsoft Windows 8 and 10. If you're using alternative versions or operating systems, screenshots and workflows may vary. To complete the training, you will also need access to a PDF viewer, such as Adobe Reader, and spreadsheet software, this can be Microsoft Excel or Apache OpenOffice Calc or even Google Sheets. And some sections of the training also require an internet connection. So make sure you're hooked up to Wi-Fi and ready to go. The data to be used within the training has been supplied by Geoscience Australia, a geoscientific research agency of the Australian government. This data can be downloaded via their website which I will link in the description. Their product is released under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 Australia license, which means you are free to copy and adapt the data, but you must give appropriate acknowledgement. You can gain access to the QGIS training folders and data required for completing this training by contacting us on the link below. The folders are structured as follows. 01 training data is where the data for this training is stored. This includes spatial data sets, spreadsheets, GPS files, and imagery data. The folder 02 training outputs is where you should keep the exported and created outputs from this training. Take a bit of time to go through these folders and the types and formats of the data you will be working with. Also note that the folders in 02 training outputs are empty, awaiting for your process data to go in. This is an example of good data management when working with a GIS, so keep it in mind as you go through the training. For example, make sure any data you are creating gets saved to the outputs folder and is named appropriately, as this will impact on subsequent exercises. And it's also important from the point of view of retrieving your data and understanding what it contains. Next, we're going to talk about how to set up a project with the proper file structure. This is really important and something that some people don't bother with. Then later, they have missing files and other issues with their project, or maybe they can't find the information they're after. Whenever you add something into your project, QGIS creates a file directory so it knows where to find these items. So it's important to have your workspace saved in a standard folder structure for QGIS to be able to find all these files later. For the QGIS training course in the next videos, we've provided you with training data which is already saved in an appropriate folder structure, but I'm just going to walk you through that structure in real time so you can see why we set it up that way. What you want to do is create a top-level project folder and give it an appropriate project-related title. This will be where you store every single layer output, and so on for this particular project. For this example, let's say I'm working on a study at the Perth International Airport looking at native flora. I'm going to call my project folder Perth Airport Flora Study 2018. 
Within this folder, we're going to make two more, 01 data and 02 outputs. Your 01 data folder will contain original, unedited data that you'll use for this project, such as vector layers. It's a good idea to store the original da data separately so that you can go back to them and use the data from scratch if you have another analysis to run. Your 02 outputs folder will be where you will save any new data we create and any changes we make to the original data. Some people prefer to name these differently, such as input and output, but the effect is the same. You have one folder for your original data and one for your process data. You want to set up this folder structure for every GIS project you undertake so that it's a predictable structure that you can move from one project to another. If you have an existing vector data set that you want to use, store it in the data folder. It's also a good idea to store any documentation that you have on the data together with the data itself. In industry speak, this is called metadata, and it's a good idea to have that information there next to the data so that analysts can see the information and decide whether that data set is good for their use through the project. Now we're going to break these folders down into subfolders. This is a good practice for keeping everything organized and easy to find. We're going to set these folders up now. Workspaces is where you'll save your QGIS projects. Shapefiles, the data sets you'll use to view and analyze your data. Spreadsheets, or Excel, or tables if you prefer, for any spreadsheets and tabular data that isn't spatial information, but may represent tabular information that you want to import into your project. A GPS folder can be used to store waypoints, or data sets that are exported from GPS units and handheld units, an images folder, for things like aerial photographs and satellite imagery. And let's go ahead and create an other folder, which might be for documents and reports that are associated with the project. You don't need to set up all of these subfolders for every project, as some of them may not be relevant, but we do recommend using at least workspaces and shapefiles. Now, in QGIS, click File, then Save As. Navigate to the project folder you set up, then the Workspaces folder. Give your workspace a name. I'm going to use this workspace to look at re-establishing a rare plant species called Conospernum undulata, so I'll call this workspace C.undulata Reveg, and click Save. Now you can see that your QGIS workspace is saved in an accessible folder structure. You can copy or move that top-level folder anywhere on your computer and everything, in, everything within it will remain unharmed and will still open. If you were to move things within these subfolders, however, you'd run into problems because QGIS won't be able to find the location of these moved files. QGIS has a default setting which saves the relative path of things. So like I said, if you move the top level folder, you're fine. If you move things around within that folder structure after you've saved the workspace, you'll run into some broken links issues. Now that you've installed QGIS and learned how to set up folders for any GIS project, it's time to jump into the training. If you're quite new to GIS and would like to learn more about it, continue to our GIS 101 video. And if you're already up to speed with GIS concepts and want to get into the training, Head straight to exercise one. Thanks everyone for watching.